Hello everyone. Welcome to my uh, Civil Brains YouTube channel. So uh, in this video, I'll be explaining you how you can make a beautiful resume, uh, even though you're a fresher or you may be having one or two years of experience, how you can have a wonderful resume. I'll speak on that. So before that, let me tell you what are the resumes that you shouldn't do. So I, often I get uh, such kind of resumes from my students. So just imagine that if you're sending a resume, something like this, what is the use? You'll not even get called for the interview. The reason is that, see, he has done an internship in home build con, but he has not mentioned like what is the size of the project? What is the role of this particular guy when he has worked there? He has written, he has worked as a site engineer, but what you have done in the site engineer job, all those things you need to mention. If you see this entire resume, right? So in the same way, I'll show you one more resume. You see here, this resume. What is there in the skills he has written MS office? Other than that, he has just written some points and all. Now, uh, if you prepare a resume, something like this, uh, then the, the chance of you getting called for the interview is very less, right? So that is why these are the resumes which you shouldn't make. So that is what I'll be doing is I'll be giving you this resume. You have to wait till the end of my lecture and then I'll tell you from where you have to download this, right? So I'll tell you a few things how you have to modify this resume. The first thing is you write your name. The second is you put your phone number, your mail ID, and you have to attach your uh, LinkedIn profile here. Then I've written a summary of skills. Now, this particular resume is for someone who is a fresher or who is for someone who has done certain internships and all. No? For them, you can prepare a resume like this. Here I've written like be in civil engineering with six months of work experience backed by knowledge and all these things I've written it here. And if, if, here in the entire points, whatever I've written, just in case if you feel like uh, you're not capable of doing certain things, what I've written it here, just delete those points. That's it. But if you feel like something has to be added, you can add one or two points here also. So I'm expecting that the guy who has taken, a student who has taken my site execution course, estimation, drawing, reading, concrete technology course, who has taken my this uh, six in one combo course for my app, this particular course, I'm expecting that he'll be having that much knowledge so that he can at least write all these things in his resume. So that is my expectation. Just in case if you don't have those knowledges, then either you gain that knowledge from other uh, from other uh, sources, or you can uh, enroll in my course and learn all those things, right? Yeah. So these are things what I've written, like I can handle a building up to G plus five building, and you know certain IS 456-2000 code book, IS 875 part one, part two, this is for uh, your this thing, dead load and live load code book, and SP 34 is for the detailing purpose. And then I've written that you know certain thumb rules and construction productivity. So this is what I've written it here. After that, I've started with my internship experience. Since you're a fresher, of course, you'll not be having a work experience, right? Whatever you have is a internship experience. So that is why I've written here first internship. And whenever you're writing, make sure you follow this particular pattern. Like uh, what is the start date of your internship? Uh, what was the duration of the internship? And what type of project you have worked, whether it was a commercial building, residential building, uh, industrial building, whether it was a road project, highway project, it was a water tank project, whatever it may be, you just type it here, okay? Project value, this is very important. What is the value of your project and how big was that particular project? That is also important. So I've written it here that it's a five CR project, which is covering a 15,000 square feet of the area. And who is a contractor? So that will give an idea. So someone who goes to your uh, resume, you'll just have an idea, okay, under whom you have done that particular project. This are the key outcome. After doing this particular internship, what is the outcome? What is the learning that you have? So I've written it here, like general engineering supervision of residential building, coordinate with the planning in the design uh, department. And then you know to check the reinforcement, you know to check the shuttering, you know to prepare the BBS on the site. Because like I mentioned, in my course, all these things will be covered in the site engineer, estimation, drawing, reading, and all. So I'm expecting that all those knowledge you have. Hmm? Then <clears throat> checking and ensure is the quality of uh, so-and-so work. And these are things what I've written. So this is your internship experience. So when you're studying in engineering or whether you are in diploma, you might have done certain internships, right? Maybe for a period of two months, three months or whatever it may be. Whatever you have done there, that you write it here. Okay, next, after that, since you have taken, I'm expecting that you have taken a training under me. If not, if you're not taken a training under me, if you have taken it from somebody else, no problem. Then you're just right there, like professional experience as intern under civil brains I've written. But if you're taking it from some other institute, you can even write that institute name also. Then again, same thing, write the start date duration. Some people may think like, sir, I have done two internship. What shall I do? So if you're done two internship, just club both the internship and together. Like, for example, if you're done two internship of six months, 
three months each. Just you write here six months and together you write it in one thing. Okay. Suppose if you have not done any courses, but you have done two internships, then no need of writing this. Then you then the same thing, whatever you have written. No, you make another here and write internship number two. So it's totally up to you. Okay. But someone who has done two internships and also has under, uh, also has taken my course, then you can club both of your internship here. No problem. And whatever you have learned from my course, you can write it like this. Fine, this is done. No, I can say my written start date, duration, type of project and project value and contractor. Since it was almost a four to five month of uh, training that you've taken under me. So that is why I've written in the first, second and third month, you learned about the complete building execution from the start to finish, where I taught you about the center line marking, how to do the excavation, PCC and all those things. I also taught you what is the importance of bending moment and shear forces on the live projects. We understood how to do the basic project planning. Uh, we understood about a lot of quality checklist. We understood the types of slabs. Each and everything I've taught you in my site engineer course. So that is why whatever I've taught you from the course, I've written all the points here. Now, if you feel like uh, you need to add a few more points, you can add a few more points. But if you feel like, no, sir, there are a few things which I don't know, then you can delete those points, okay? But if you feel like, no, no, I'll write the same thing, but I want to learn, then you can enroll in my course and learn it. From fourth and sixth month, uh, we worked on quantity estimation of a residential bungalow and the cost was 80 lakh rupees and we used MS Excel and the uh, AutoCAD software for that. So that is why I've written it here. Then what, uh, what all things we had done, we had done the complete estimation like excursion, quantity, footing, column, beam, slab, staircase, brickwork, blocker, plastering, everything we had done. So same thing I've written it here. I also taught you to prepare the bar bending schedule for the footing, column, beam and all. So the same thing I've written here, BPS. We also learned to prepare the BOQ. We understood how to refer the SOR and DR, DAR, that is also written here, right? Written here. Just in case if you feel you learned something else or you, you have some more knowledge, you can just add another one or two points here. If required, you add, it's not required. Now I return one more point here that is a key outcome. So in my six month of internship, when I say six month, uh, someone who has entered in this uh, particular course, I'm expecting that you will, you will be getting at least a six month of internship. If you enroll in this course, so you'll be getting around three to four months of knowledge. Here you'll get another few more extra courses. That's it. Okay, fine. Now that is the reason I've written it here. Uh, uh, key outcomes of six month internship. Suppose if you have done some four month internship or you have taken my six in one combo course, you can write four months here. It's totally up to you. So uh, entire thing, what we do, uh, what we did uh, in my entire course, I had taught you how to do the construction of a basement plus ground plus a three-story building. Same things I've written. We understood about all the shuttering works, detailing, centering, and all. We understood about the different types of foundation like isolated footing, combined footing, eccentric footing, rough foundation, pile foundation. We understood how to provide uh, reinforcement in one-way slab and two-way slab. And then also, uh, in my drawing reading course, I have taught you how to read the structural drawings like a G plus 1, G plus 3, G plus 5 building, G plus 20 story building. All the things is covered in my course. So whatever I have written it here, I'll show you once again. If I click on this uh, uh, construction manager mastery course, and if I go to the content, and if I show you this English language, and if I go to this site engineer, whatever site execution knowledge you want, it has been explained in this particular course. After that, whatever drawing reading knowledge I had written there, no, like you know to read G plus one, see, it's a G plus three building I have covered here. All 19 videos are there. Then I taught you the structure designing of a G plus three building, G plus two residential building with a car parking, G plus one commercial building, G plus one hostel building. Then I'd given you some column placing assignments. Then there was structure engineering concept, which I had explained to you. There was an industrial building. There was an interior drawings I explained. There's a basement plus ground plus three story commercial building with a basement parking I'd explained to you. There was an airport drawing. Then I'd explained to you four basement plus ground plus 22 story high rise building. So you understood, right? Each and everything. And I explained you the different types of footings like isolated, combined, eccentric footing. Each and everything is taught in this particular course. I'll show you one more video for that because the reason why i'm showing is that uh, unnecessary you should not fill in the uh, resumes unless and until you have a knowledge uh, you don't fill it if you don't have the knowledge you just see there's a cons there's something called structure engineering so in the structure engineering i've taught you like how to decide the footing size how to design the footing manually i've explained you about the combined footing eccentric footing and also the pile and combined uh, rough foundation will be added here. right now it's not added i'll be adding it so keeping all those things in the mind only i've written all these things but if you feel like no sir i don't know all those things just delete all these things whichever you feel you have a knowledge you write it okay then since you're a fresher usually writing an academic project is always a better option 
So I've written like what topic I did when I had done my academic project. And then you have to write what is the project scope of that. You should write the project outcome. So this is how you're supposed to write. Just don't write the topic name and finish it off. No, you should explain like what was the objective, what is the outcome you got. No? So that the person who goes through a resume will understand at least what you have actually done. Next, coming to the educational qualification. Suppose if you're done, if you're done just BTEC, just write BTEC. If you're done MTech, write MTech. If you're done PhD, write PhD. If you're done diploma, just write diploma. No problem. Then this way, this is then you write your 12th, 10th, whatever you have done, you just write it here. Okay, fine. That's the second thing. Now, uh, whichever is your latest education. For example, in my case, MTech is my latest education. So that will be at the top. And uh, suppose if you're not an MTech, if you're done BTech and uh, let us say diploma, your BTech will be at the top. Okay, the latest education should be at the top. Always try to understand it. One more thing. One more thing. Yeah, just in case if your marks are not good, you don't you don't have to write the marks. Suppose there are many students whose marks may be like 50, 55, 60. So why you want to unnecessarily write and mention it? Don't write your marks. If your marks are more than 70, 75, just mention it. If it is like 50, 55, 60, just ignore it. You don't have to write, okay? Then this is my personal details. That is what I've written. And one important thing is that I've written, I added one more page that is a glimpse of project worked for six months. Like when you've taken my course, I expect that this much knowledge you're having. So these are the things what is thought in my course, like site execution, I taught you. I taught you the, how to do the uh, concrete, I mean, a PCC laying, then footing I'd explained to you, concreting of footing was explained. Then I'd explain to you the backfilling, how it has to be done in layers. Then I'd explain to you the entire slab layout. Then we had understood about the beam reinforcement, how to put the slab reinforcement. And this was a building which I had explained most of the things in my 45 hours of the course on the site execution course. And for the same building after completion, it will look like this. And this is something like safety point of view. So if you prepare a resume, something like this, it will add a weightage, right? So compared to all this resume, now you tell me, compared to this particular resume, this resume is good, right? Right, it's of course it's good, but you should have that level of knowledge. Even though you're fresher, it's okay. But when you take certain trainings, when you upgrade your knowledge, definitely you'll have that much knowledge that you can apply for the job where they're asking at least one year. If somebody asks you, like, I want a guy who has up to one year of experience, I would definitely tell you either after enrolling in this particular course of six in one combo or at a construction manager master or my six week challenge definitely that much knowledge you're going to get because whenever you apply for any job what they expect is they expect that you should know the site execution part which is already covered in my entire course this is a complete site execution course whatever i've shown you there right each and everything i'm going to teach you in this particular course if you see it here right from the center line marking to each and everything it's covered in my course okay after that once you learn this of course the next thing what i'm going to teach you is a drawing reading so next is the drawing reading. In the drawing reading, you learn all, all the different types of drawing. More than 20 plus drawings I've covered. You're going to learn that. After that, I'll be teaching you the quantity estimation, how to do the estimation and all. So those things is taught in this particular course. So if you know these three things, no, definitely, I would say at this from this stage, at least 20 to 30 percent of your knowledge is definitely going to improve. Apart from that, I've given a lot of things like BBS, BOQ is taught. Then I've given you an interview preparation course. This is a separate course where I'll tell you only the interview questions. You learn about the concrete technology, you learn about MS Excel. So once you have this much knowledge, up to 10 courses, if you enroll, no, definitely you can prepare a resume, something like this. And if you prepare a resume like this, definitely whatever is taught in my course, that is covered here. Got it? So this was for someone who is a fresher. Now, for someone who is experienced, let us say someone who has, let us say, one year or two year or three year of experience, what kind of resume he's supposed to do? Same resume he's supposed to do. There's no much changes. Only the thing is few changes I'll tell you. Before that, I'll tell you one more thing. Whenever you are sending a resume to anyone, you just have to write it something like this. See, I'll write save as here, this PC. Just don't write like, uh, see, I have seen a lot of students writing like new resume. They'll write new resume and they'll forward it or they'll write like latest resume, latest resume, and they'll, they'll write latest resume zero one, and they'll forward it. So this is not a professional way of uh, sending a resume to anyone. Always uh, mention your name first. Like my name is Akshay Kamath, I'll write it here. Suppose if you're fresher, don't mention fresher. Uh, so, uh, what kind of job you're applying for? Suppose if you're applying for a site engineer job, you just mention here, site engineer, okay? Done. Now, since you're a fresher, of course you'll not be having a, professional experience through internship you have that knowledge but what you can do is here you write up to you have experience up to one year 
you may have a six year uh, six month internship experience or you may have a three or five month of internship experience so what you can write is up to one year so what what it will indicate that your name is akshay kamal uh, you are applying for a site engineer post and you have an experience up to one year so the person who sees your resume even before he ent even before he opens your resume he'll get an idea whose resume he is referring to right otherwise instead of writing this if you write something like latest latest resume i've seen many people doing this latest resume okay don't do all those things it's not a professional way so it's better try to avoid all those things got it yeah now i'll go to the one more resume that is uh, for someone who has uh, let us say uh, two to three year of experience in that case what you can do is uh, you can prepare a resume something like this same thing nothing much difference format remains the same only the thing is say when you work for at least uh, one two or three years you will be working on some live projects you might have at least completed one or two projects that much knowledge too you are having i'm expecting that in two years this much knowledge you'll be having so that is the reason i've changed few words here like be in civil engineering instead of six months i'll write here two years okay you just have to change few things i'll write let us say you have a two year of experience i've written be in civil engineering with two year of work experience backed by knowledge of civil engineering theories principles and construction standards and let us say you worked as a site engineer so i've written here worked as a site engineer for two years and exposure to rcc construction practices you can do the estimation you can do the bbs of a multi story building and you have the ability to read the structural and architect drawing up to g plus 8 building let us say you have been work like in your two year of your experience you have worked on some g plus 40 story construction so you can write here up to g plus 40 story building construction you have worked and you have a knowledge on that okay whatever it may be someone who has not worked no problem whatever you have worked someone might have worked only up to g plus 10 you just mention g plus 10 now these things i have written like you have a understanding of indian standard 456 2000 code book you you know is 875 part 1 part 2 code book you know sp 34 and in this case, don't write uh, general thumb rule, uh, general thumb rules and construction productivity. I've written. So when I've written all these things, so you should be knowing. Don't just write to fill up the space here. If you know only, then you write it. Okay. And then I've written that in your previous job, you have handled a complete building of up to let us say G plus ten building. I'll write here. So I written like you have handled a basement plus ground plus ten story building, and uh, where you have taken care of the entire quality and all. And then also I've written it here that you can. Since you have worked for two years, you'll be working with a group of team, right? So that is why I've written it here. You have an exposure of site execution and you are able to lead a team. So when you write something like able to lead a team, so it will add, add a impact to a resume. Whether you'll handle or not, that's the second question. At least uh, for someone who is going through a resume, you should feel like you have that leadership quality in you. So I've written it here, able to lead a team and handle a project up to, let us say, so tomorrow if you are applying for a job of, let us say, G plus 15 story building. And here, if you're writing, I can handle up to G plus 20 from start to finish by taking care of quality and it'll add an impact. But again, whatever you write, you should have that confidence in you. Okay, that's it. After that, I've written here, like, what is your work experience? Work experience till date, let us say you have two years of experience. You just mentioned two years. And in two years, if you have worked on residential project and on commercial project, and let us say you have worked on industrial project also. Don't know how many projects you have worked. I don't know. I have written random things like, you know, residential project, you know, commercial, you know, industrial. Suppose you don't know, just delete from here. But this is a pattern what you're supposed to follow. Like first you write since September from whichever year you have started working. So and so date you have started, the company name you write, where it was. And as a site engineer, you have worked there. Who is a client? What is the total area of that project? What, which industry you have worked for? What is the value of the project? What is the duration of the project? You need to write all these things. Since you have two-year experience, the person who is going to hire you, he expects that you should handle the project. So if so that when you write something like you have handled a 100 CR project, he'll get an idea how big project you have handled. What is the exposure that you have got from your previous job? So that is why I've written it here, 100 CR, two years of work. And then again, the areas included I've written like in this particular project, let us say, I worked on a building where there was a column and a beam system and there were foundations like raft, pile and let us say combined footing I've written. And there are structural slabs of area 8,000 square feet uh, where the concreting was done through a RMC. And I had done, and you had done all the interior work like block work, plastering, and all, and you coordinated with the MEP team and all. So these are the things what I've written from my side. So if you feel you also have done the same thing in your previous job when you work up to two years, you write the same thing. But if you feel no, no, I did not do something like this, but I did something else, then you write whatever you want to write. Then key result areas I've written. Okay, but you have to follow the same pattern. It's always same pattern. It's always better. Now the same thing. This is my 
one year experience let us say this is my two year experience after that you work for another one year in some other company then you write that same thing for that okay after that come to the academic details it's the same thing i'll not repeat it again now come to the certifications and achievement part now you may ask me one question sir uh, in the fresher resume you did not add certifications and achievement why you are adding it here say so there it's actually not required i mean if you are very good in sports co uh, extra curricular activities you just you can add one more uh, uh, this thing what is that uh, what you call this ha huh, one more uh, you add all these things and you just write it there but i didn't write it over that because it's not required but if you feel you should write you can do that okay there is nothing like uh, right and wrong in resume preparation and all it's totally up to you but i felt uh, fresher that is not required but once you have one or two year of experience people will look about your leadership qualities your achievements and all even fresher also they look but the, uh, for us that is not important over there for us your skills is important as a fresher because getting a job itself is difficult for a fresher but here already you have two year experience now you let us say you did some seminar on some you learned ms project and primavera tool from some institute or somewhere then you you attended a three day webinar uh, on a uh, contracts and its importance you you attended that then uh, let us say you have done some quantity estimation a building engineer course from somewhere okay uh, then you you did a one month uh, course on quality control these are your achievements now you write all those things here and since you are working on the side usually you speak with the labors you have to give them this uh, uh, what is uh, what you what you call you have to mentor those people and all right on the site usually we have to take care of safety so that is why i have written it here that delivered a speech to the construction worker about the importance of safety at the workplace but apart from this if you feel like you have done something else or maybe you have completed the project on time and somebody you know acknowledge that uh, so if you have some achievements and all you can always write it here no problem at all but don't fill uh, too much of uh, achievements and all here not record because no one has a time to read all these things Three to five points is always a better thing. Okay, that's finished. Now comes the very important part. Since you have worked for two years, I'm expecting that at least two projects you have completed. Just put the photos of that. These are the photos which I took from Google. But when you have, when you try to prepare your own thing, what you do is, of course, you'll be having a photos of your projects which have worked. If not, you'll get it from Google if it is uploaded. You take a photos from there, write it, put it there. and then what you do is you just write what is for example i have written kinderwa commercial building at delhi this is a g plus 1 bungalow which i have done at bangalore this is a rough foundation with a drops for a g plus 15 apartment it's a g plus 3 story bungalow at noida and then finally i have written my personal details now what is the advantage of doing this the advantage is that when somebody goes to your profile he'll get to know okay this guy even though he has a two year of experience he has exposure on such a big projects okay he had done the rough foundation also he has done a project something like this he has done a project something like this he has done a project some this something like this so what will happen most of the interview questions will be based on this only he may ask you like okay what were the challenges you faced while doing the concreting of the raft what was the thickness of your raft what were the diameters of the bar that you used how long you took to, uh, how long you took to do the uh, concreting of the raft he may ask you like okay it's a g plus 1 build, uh, build uh, bungalow right uh, what was the cost of this and what was the floor area of all these things what were the size of the column that you used okay you have done a g plus 3 building no uh, okay tell me uh, what all what all interior uh, interiors you had used all those inside that so he may he will ask you all the questions related to this only so indirectly you are giving the interviewer a chance to ask the questions only which you know but if you don't add all these things he may ask you some random questions so instead of you inviting trouble it's better that you uh, prepare your resume in such a way that he is going to ask you questions which you already know of course see in the interview it's not that you should answer all the questions if he is asking you 10 questions even if you are able to answer 7 to 8 question that's sufficient because everybody will not be knowing everything right very simple if i have 10 year experience somebody who has 12 year experience may know something more than me uh, somebody who has 7 year experience may not may know little less than me or even in, or in there is a chance that he may he may know something more than me but it all depends on what kind of project exposure he has got that's it okay so this is how you are supposed to prepare the resume if you have a Two to three year of experience. That's it. Again, while saving the resume, make sure that you are writing like this, like Akshay Kamat. I'm applying for a senior site engineer post or whatever post it may be, and I'm writing three year of experience. So that will add an impact. Now, whatever I explained you so far, it was only for the site engineer job. Tomorrow, let us say you are applying for a quantity surveyor job, or you already have a quantity uh, surveyor job experience. You want to apply for some other job. I mean, uh, for a higher, a uh, bigger position, or you have worked as a quality control engineer. all these things you keep same wherever you feel there is a changes to be done you do for example if you are applying for a qs job then obviously 
you need to add a one more code book here that is is1200 part 1 part 2 there are many parts in is1200 it is a mode of measurement code book you mention here is1200 because for a quantity survey that is that is a main book for them is1200 okay then after that uh, there is a cpwd clause cpwd volume 1 and volume 2 there is a book okay you can even add that also so based on your requirement you can add each and everything okay yeah apart from that uh, you can make certain changes here now i'll show you one more this thing uh, you can add certain points from here. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose if you're applying for a job of a quantity surveyor or billing engineer post, these are the points what I've written. You can add all these points in your resume. Now, since you already work on a QS project, you have done a lot of estimation and all. So in that case, you can write points like this, like you have done the estimation of the standard quantities from the GFC drawing. GFC means good for construction drawing. Then you have prepared the BOQ, you have done the bar bending as per the drawing. Then you prepare the work orders to the various vendors, subcontractors. Then you have done the rate analysis for various items or NT, NT means non-tendered items. Then you prepare the bills that is client bill, subcontractor bill you have done, right? So these are the things which will come if you're applying for the QS and the building engineer job. I'll be attaching this also. You can download from here and wherever you feel you have to add these points in your resume you do it based on your profile got it the same thing is for a quality control engineer for a quality control engineer he should have a good fundamentals about the he should have good knowledge about all the code books and then uh, whatever is your quality assurance plan and whatever are the code books like is uh, there are certain code books for quality standards you can add all those things so that is how you're supposed to prepare it for fresher whatever i've given it is enough for fresher and for uh, site engineer uh, experienced people for someone who, is, who want to get into QS job can add all this point. For someone who want to add few more things, for someone, let us say he, has, he knows how to prepare the daily progress report that is DPR and all. Let him add all those things in his uh, resume. And the last thing which is left out is for a structural engineer post. Suppose if you're applying for a structural engineer post, then what you can do, same thing, same resume. If you are a fresher, go with the same resume, but you have to change few things, that's it, okay? I'll tell you what all things you're supposed to do. Uh, yeah, structural engineer resume. So I'll be giving you this resume also. What you're supposed to do is, see, when applying for a structural engineer job, then you should mention the softwares, like you know AutoCAD, ETAP, SIP, ah. If you know only, then you have to mention. If you don't know, then you have to learn and you have to apply for those jobs, okay? You have to write AutoCAD, ETAP, SIP, STAD Pro. These are the uh, softwares which you know. But if you're applying for a quantity surveyor job, if you're applying for a site engineer job, you don't have to mention ETAP, SAFE, and STAT Pro because you'll never use it as a site engineer on the side. So unnecessarily don't add a software which is not relevant to your job profile. For a, uh, for a structure engineer, these things are required. Okay, that's it. Auto get out done. Then work experience he has written it here. And here he has written all the project experience. That means he has worked on a project uh, like a corporate campus consists of five towers where this is a resume of my friend. Uh, he has written like he has done it of here. I mean, the project is like it has two basement, a ground floor and a 11 to 18 story at Bangalore. And what all things he had done there, each and everything he has mentioned it. He has done a Lulu Mall construction at Lucknow. It was 1.7 million square feet. From this, we'll get an idea to what, how big projects you have done. So that is why always when you write a resume, make sure that you're writing each and everything. Like he has done a three basement plus ground floor plus six story building at Hyderabad. Okay. And here he has done one more thing. That is a three basement ground plus 19 story plus four story steel structure he has done. You're getting my point, no? So if you're applying for a job of a structural engineer, you should write something like this. Now you'll ask me one question. Sir, I'm a fresher. Uh, how can I write? I, I'm a fresher, but I want to apply for a structure engineer job. What should I do? In that case, you should have a knowledge. You should have at least worked on uh, uh, G plus one, G plus two, G plus three building. You should know how to do the modeling in the software. You should know to do the analysis. You should know to do the design. You should know to do the detailing. All these things you should have worked. And once you create your own portfolio, then you can prepare a resume like this. Okay, because when you're applying for a structure engineer job, they expect that you should know your fundamentals should be good in structure analysis, strength of materials, RCC subject. You should have a good uh, uh, software knowledge on ETAP, SAFE, RCDC. And you should have at least worked on three to four projects or G plus one, G plus two building. This much knowledge you should have. If you don't have, then definitely it's very difficult for you to clear the interview because nobody will be there to guide you. You have to prepare yourself. Like, see, one more thing. Whenever you're going for the job, it's like you're going for a war. Okay. Even before you go to the war, you should get your weapons ready. It's not like uh, you went to the war, somebody is attacking you. 
and you're like, okay, wait, wait, let me bring the weapon. You cannot do all those things. So weapons in the sense, these are your weapons. Like these skills are your weapons now. That's it. If you're a fresher, sight knowledge you should have, estimation knowledge you should have, drawing reading knowledge you should have. Uh, now, uh, right, if you're applying for a structure engineer post, these are the knowledge you should have, a software knowledge. If you're applying for a quantity survey job, you should know estimation, you should know BOQ preparation and all. So these things you have to study. Now you'll ask me one question, sir, where to study? So there are many people who are teaching all these things. You can enroll in their courses. If you want to learn it from me, you can download my Civil Brain app. My courses are available on Udemy. You can learn from there. If you want everything to learn in one single uh, course, then you can download my Civil Brain app. The course by name Six in One Combo. This is enough for a fresher level. For someone who want to get into the planning job, who want to learn something else, then you can go for my Construction Manager Mastery. Suppose if you want uh, to learn a little bit of AutoCAD and then Revit, you can enroll in my Six Week Challenge. So these are the different options you have. And whatever I've written in the resume for a fresher engineer what if you enroll in this course then definitely that much knowledge you're going to get okay huh. then the, if you want to see like how i teach and all some there are some few people like they don't want to spend so much of money they want to say okay let me first enroll in a small course and check how you're going to teach you are always welcome enroll in my this small course try to see how i teach but one thing i'll tell you after enrolling in this course okay don't expect that you'll get a knowledge that you're going to get from this course and after enrolling in this course you cannot prepare i mean uh, after enrolling this in this particular course of 109 rupees uh, then don't come and you know prepare a resume something like this yeah don't come and prepare one minute huh. don't come and prepare a resume something like this the reason is very simple whatever is written in my resume i'm expecting that it has this much knowledge you have so in 99 rupees, I cannot teach you everything, okay? Ha, but uh, you are like, okay, no, no, sir, I'll prepare a resume like this. You prepare, but uh, I'll not guarantee of any job. But if you get a job, well and good, I will be happy. Okay, but from my side, there is no guarantee that after enrolling in this course, your knowledge will not reach to this level. But if you already have existing knowledge, then it's fine. No problem. You can carry with that. You can, you can carry on with that, okay? So this was the entire thing which I wanted to tell. I'll be providing this particular, uh, uh, all the resumes. Uh, in the comment section okay there's a pinned comment you can download the four resumes i'll be providing you the fresher resume to one to two year resume uh, then this thing what is that additional points if you want to apply for qs jobs and all and then the structure engineer resume i'll be giving wherever you feel there is a modification to be done you can do but if you have a resume better than this then you can follow that also but main thing always remember try to explain whatever things you have done and it's always better if you can add some pictures and all so that it will add a more weightage to your resume because resumes everybody is doing how different you are doing from other people that is where it will help you to get, land a job okay that's the difference between uh, preparing a resume by a normal person and for someone who has watched my video and if you prepare a resume like this your chance is definitely going to increase i would say slightly it's going to increase that's it so for someone who want to learn, you can download my Civil Brains app and you can enroll in my course. And in the next video, I'll come with a video where I'll be teaching you how to apply for a job if you're a fresher, if you're experienced, how to make use of a LinkedIn uh, platform and how you can connect with the people and all. I'll be telling you all those things in the next video. So if you like my video, do like and subscribe uh, to the channel. And there are other videos which you can watch and you can upgrade your knowledge. So I'll see you back in the next video. Thank you.